This call is now being recorded. All right, good morning again. So, hello everyone. So, uh, I am your uh, your student teacher for today. My name again is Miss Wishel Santarosa. So, uh, all right, so we will going to start, we are going to start now, but we will uh, start with a prayer, okay? All right, so I will be the one who will lead the prayer. So, um, all right, so please close uh, your eyes and feel every word, uh, every words and claim it, okay? Dear Lord and Father of all, thank you for today. Thank you for uh, your ways in uh, which you provide for, for us all. For your protection and love, we thank you. Help us to focus our hearts and minds now on what we are about to learn. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit as we listen and write. Holy Spirit, as uh, guide us uh, by your eternal light as we discover more about the world around us. We ask all this in the, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. All right, so uh, before we start our lesson... Our words for today is from Vincent Van Gogh, which is, if you hear a voice within you say that you cannot paint or you cannot do your, uh, your dream or you cannot reach your dream, then by all means, just paint or just do it. Just uh, pursue your dreams and that voice will be silenced because, all right, because, um, Oh, by the way, uh, uh, class mayor or class manager, are you here? Can anyone hear me? Hello? Hello po, ma'am. Oh, yes. Who's that? Miss me who's that? Is that Miss Barrientos? Ako po, ma'am. Oh hi. Uh so you are the class manager for today? No po, ma'am. No okay, po. she's not here ma yet. Pinapasabi po ni Catherine naghang daw po yung laptop niya. Oh, okay. So Miss Diaz, can you uh kindly uh can you, or uh, on behalf of Miss uh, Barrientos, oh, excuse me. Yeah, hi, Miss Barrientos. Naghang po yung computer. Attention oh, it's up. okay. All right, so um, I would like you to take screenshots of your uh attendance for today, okay? Yes, po, mami, that po. Okay. All right, so uh, class, um, let's have some quick flashback or review about uh, your last, uh, your lesson last week. So, did uh, what did you learn from the discussion of Miss Shy last week? Anyone? And uh, what did you learn? From the discussion of Miss uh, Mom Shy last week. You can answer uh, in the chat box and you can raise your hand. Okay. Miss Hello, ma'am. Yes, ma. Uh, yes. It says um, seven elements of art. Po. Wow, very good. All right. The elements and principles of art. Very good. All right, that's right. So she discussed about the elements, uh, principle, uh, principle of arts, and she taught you all how to identify the elements and principle of arts, correct? 
Okay, very good, everyone. All right, so again, let's move to uh, to our um. So we will. Uh, I will going to have some. Um, okay, so uh, so if I may ask you, everyone, if you have given a chance to choose a power between, you can go back to the past and continue up to your present life or go to the future and never return to your present life what would you uh, what would you choose and why it is only one way ticket so think before you answer and explain why you chose that power anyone Yes, Miss Barrientos. Um, siguro po ako po. Um, I would choose yung go back to the past. Mm -hmm. Yes, po. and why? Um, magkipagkusa po ako dun sa mga tao na naging part ng history, di ba po? Parang kung baga po magpapakwento ganyan, para po maging um makagain ng information about din po sa history natin. Kasi di ba po iba po pag nang galing sa kanila yung story ayun po parang mm -hmm. sobrang exciting po nun. okay very good so aside of miss variantos uh others do you have uh, what would uh, you choose between uh, these two power you can answer in a chat box everyone uh class or you can raise your hand. So what would you choose if you uh, if uh, you can go back to the past and continue to your present life or go to the future and never return to your present life? Go back to the past, continue present life. Correct. Okay, very good. I've made in my, correct the mistakes, i made in my past from uh, Miss Madrona. Okay. All right. So, um, okay. So, as our elders saying, you cannot change the past. Just move on and learn from it. And now, in your present, do the thing or do the right thing. To, uh, uh, for your future because your uh, our future lies in our present life. Okay? All right. So now, uh, imagine that we are in a time machine because I will be taking you all to the year where uh, the art started, okay? Because we will be discussing about the art history timeline. So, do you know or is uh, anyone here knows those uh, where those arts came from? For me, future. Okay, very good. Thank you very much for your answer. Or, uh, so, does anyone know where those arts came from? Okay. All right, so let's move on. Okay. All right, so uh, so in early history, the art were not viewed as separate disciplines, such as dance, painting, and music, but rather as integrated with each other and uh, with life. The arts were objects and performance combined with the rituals and customs that identified the beliefs and values of society's culture. That is uh, regarding to uh, Anderson in 1995. And those arts from all historical periods reveals insight about man's thoughts, his imagination, and his perceptions of the world. 
Okay. All right. So now, our topic for today, as I've told you, we are going to discuss about the art history timeline. Okay. So first in timeline of art is the Stone Age. So the Stone Age is divided in three distinct periods, which is the Paleolithic period, or called Old uh, Stone Age, in 30,000 uh, 30, to 10,000 BCE. And the second is the Middle Stone Age, or the uh, Mesolithic uh, period. And the last one is the Neolithic, which is uh, called the New Stone Age. Okay. I'm still reading your, uh, seeing your answer, and all your answer is correct. All right, so our first timeline in Stone Age is the Paleolithic Art Stone Age, which is in 40,000 to 8,000 BCE, or the Before Common Era. And in Paleolithic, emergence of basics, uh, basic stone uh, tools and uh, stone art. Okay, and the characteristic of the Paleolithic era or uh, Paleolithic uh, age, can anyone uh, read the first uh, characteristic of Paleolithic? Anyone can read the first one of the characteristic? Ako na lang po, ma yes, Moana, go ahead. This consists of realistic images of large animals, most of which are known from fossil evidence to have lived in the area. Okay, very good. Continue. Humans were hunter-gatherers. They revolved around food. Okay. You can continue, Ms. Moana. Uh, next spot, portable art and stationary art cave walls. Okay, very good. And the last one is? Art was about food and fertility. Okay. So this is, uh, what, this is uh, the characteristic of Paleolithic age. So in uh, this um, age, humans were, uh, the people there is a hunter-gatherers they uh they they revolved around food or in other words in our words uh their life uh their the food is life to them okay and the, all their artworks is uh uh painting in cave walls all right and they have portable art which is uh, they can take it with them when they uh when they uh moved to other places all right and all their uh all their uh artworks is all about food and fertility and their artworks are uh, again that is cave paintings and one of uh, the famous uh paintings or cave paintings of them are um are in altamira spain so this is uh, one of their uh paintings that is the reproduction of a Bison illustration nearly 14,000 years old from uh, the cave of Altamira, located near Santillana del Mar in Cantabria, Spain. And the first people on Earth, or uh, the Paleolithic uh, age, uh, or the Paleolithic people, they are the uh, first people on Earth are known, and they are called Homo habilis, uh, Homo habilis, which is, uh, meaning is skillful man. All right. Okay. And this one is their tools. They are, this is made from stone. This is a Paleolithic tools found in Bernifal Cave in Mi uh, Mirals, Dordogne, France. Estimated to be 12,000 to 10,000 uh, years old. So as you can see in the picture, it is made, in, uh, made of stone and they made it sh uh, sharp for them to, um, to easily cut their food. And most of their food is animals, big animals like um, 
elephant like that, and so on and so forth. And this one, uh, so as we, uh, as their art is all about food and fertility, so they made this one, which is the Venus of Del uh, Dolny, Vistanis. It is a Venus figurine. It is a ceramic situate of a nude female figure. So it is um, representing the fertility. That's why they made uh, this um, figure, uh, figurine, this sculpture. Okay, so in Paleolithic, uh, uh, the Paleolithic people, again, uh, don't settle in one place because, as I've told you, uh, the food is life to them. So this age, they go where, uh, where the foods are. So remember that, okay? In Paleolithic, the, uh, their life is all about food and fertility. Okay, so in the next um, timeline in Stone Age is, which is called the Mesolithic Age or the Middle Stone Age. All right, and that is from 40,000 to 8,000 BCE. And uh, most, uh, in this Mesolithic, most hunt, uh, it is most hunter-gatherer with fishing and the beginning of Farming. So to put uh, the Mesolithic in context, the two uh, defining periods of the Stone Age were the Paleolithic and the Neolithic era. Uh, by the way, guys, am I too fast or do you understand? If I am too, pa uh, too fast, just tell me, okay, so I can s slow it, <laughs> slow it for you all. Hello? Okay lang po, ma'am. Okay. Okay lang po. Okay. Do you have any question about Paleolithic? Wala naman po, ma'am. Wala naman po, ma'am. Okay. So, alright. So, uh, again, in Mesolithic, uh, so, uh, to put the Mesolithic age, um, in uh, Paleolithic people uh, or Paleolithic age, the, the people there is hunter-gatherer who followed the herds of their food or, and which is the animals. And uh, while in the Neolithic, the people there is generally lived in settlements. So they settle. They are, uh, they are not like Paleolithic that always moving to other places just to uh, look for a food or for their food. So in Neolithic age, they learn how to cultivate crops and uh, domesticate, they domesticated animals for their agriculture. So, but the hunter-gatherers don't transform themselves or uh, the Paleolithic people don't transform themselves into settled farmers overnight. So in between these two defining eras, with is, uh, which is the Paleolithic and the Neolithic, uh, it has an elastic uh, third period which acts as a bridge between, uh, between them. And that is called, or which is called the Mesolithic or the Middle Stone Age. So that's why uh, they call the Mesolithic. Middle Stone Age. So, Middle Stone Age, it begins at the end of the Ice Age, roughly 10,000 BCE, and ends with the arrival of agriculture. So, in this, uh, uh, in this era, they invented, they learned how to invent uh, wooden bows, arrows for hunting, and boats for fishing. So, their skill evolved or they learned uh, a lot. Okay, so anyone read the characteristic of uh, uh, in the Mesolithic uh, art? Anyone can read the uh, characteristic? Yes, Miss Diaz? 
Characteristic of me- Mesolithic. Um, this was a period. This was a period when human developed new techniques of stone working. Next, painting became utili- utilitarian and was created with a purpose for use. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, Ms. Diaz. So, in Mesolithic, this is the uh, period where the humans or the people there they, uh, they develop new techniques or new ideas. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. And painting, their painting became utilitarian, which means uh, it is uh, useful, to be useful. All right. And um, in Mesolithic art, refers to all arts and crafts uh, created between the end of Paleolithic age. And it is the beginning, as I've told you, it is the beginning of a farming. Uh, with its uh, cultivation and animal husbandry, and the and the need for mobile uh, mobiliary uh, mobiliary art is gradually reduced, and uh, domestic crafts became uh, more important. So, what do we mean by mobiliary art? Mobiliary art, from the uh, name itself, mobiliary, it means uh, the art or their art is movable so and also it is commonly used to denote any small size or small scale prehistoric art that is they cannot take it with them all right so that is uh so in mesolithic the mobiliary art it is reducing because they learn how to settle uh, this is the time that the people or the People in a stone age, they learn how to settle in one place. And uh, their famous, or one of these, uh, their famous uh, artwork, it is a design or engraved, uh, engraved stone. And we can see it uh, at La Mole Cave from Dordogne, France. So this is one of their famous artwork. It is, from, it is a rack engraving. So they engrave this, they crave, uh, carve, it is a carving of a prone antelope, a teen tug hurt, or tassili, or tasselin and a uh, her. I don't know how per, uh, how to pronounce it right, but that is, uh, that is one of their famous painting. All right. And in Mesolithic uh, age, people moved out from caves and built Hat. So they learn how to settle because uh, their ideas or techniques evolve because they learn how to fish, how to uh, farm. So they don't need to go uh, anywhere just to look for a food. All right. So in Mesolithic, the people in this age are called the Homo erectus or man who walks upright. So it means walks a uh, man who walks upright uh it means um they learn they develop their skill okay all right so let's move to our third in a stone age uh, by the way this is one of their uh, example of tools when they learn uh, how to fish they uh used to or they make a stone tools like this a fishing hook made from stone and they uh, learn how to make pottery as well all right so our third in stone age is all right anyone read our uh, third in stone age please read Anyone? Ma'am? Uh, yes, Miss Stephanie? Neolithic art or new stone age. Mm-hmm. Okay. But... 8,000 8, to 3,000 BCE, the beginning of civilization. 
Okay, very good. Thank you very much for that, Miss Stephanie. So our third in Stone Age, it is the Neol uh, Neolithic Age in 8000 to 3000 BCE. And it is the beginning of civilization. So people no longer had to migrate as nomads. And the agricultural revolution let people live in villages and city. So that's the time that they settle. Okay. All right. So the, uh, the characteristic of Neolithic. All right. So anyone, please read the characteristic of the of our Neolithic art. Anyone? Mama ko na lang po. Yes, Miss Micaela, go ahead. Along with development in agriculture, this period was also marked by the use of refined we weapons and tools. Man learned many new things, which include using new tools for sculpting, creating pottery, painting, etc. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, Miss Micaela. So in Neolithic, they uh, developed or they learn how to uh, agricul uh, yeah, along with development in agriculture, this period was also marked by the use of refined weapons. So their, so their we uh, weapons or tools, it is refined. It is more, um, more specific. Like if uh, they have a tools for agriculture, they have a tools for fishing or for hunting like that. So, and also in Neolithic, man learned many new things, and which include using, yeah, the new tools for sculpting, creating pottery, painting, etc. All right. So, uh, their artworks, one of the famous uh, artwork in Neolithic is the stone, uh, Stonehenge and the Jericho, or the Great Wall of Jericho. This is, uh, I read this about, uh, in Bible. The, re the Great Wall of Jericho. All right, so this is uh, the Stonehenge. It is aligned with the, the rising sun. At the midsummer solstice, it may have served to predict both a lunar and solar eclipse. It may have been used to track uh, seasonal changes something essential to agriculture society so that is the stonehenge as you can see and it is uh, to predict um seasonal changes and this one is the great stone or the great uh the jericho the great uh, wall of jericho it was protected by five foot thick walls and uh, at least one stone uh, tower 30 feet high and 30 feet, uh, 33 feet in diameter. Okay, all right. And uh, in Neolithic, uh, the men or the people are called homo sapiens or the man who thinks. So in, uh, in the Neolithic people, they are found that uh, cultivating crafts made life more, uh, much more secure. And uh, farming settlements gained control for their food su uh, supply, less uh, vulnerable to predators or several things happened. And uh, in the Neoli uh, Neolithic age, the population expanded significantly. And also the people there began to develop systems of beliefs and uh, in supernatural deities or the goddesses. So do you have any question about um, about the three stages in Stone Age? Did you understand the three stages of the Stone Age? Do you have any question? Well, I don't know, Mom. Okay, thank you. So, all right. So that is the three. That that is the three Stone Age uh, 
which is the Paleolithic, Neolithic, and the Mesolithic. All right. So let's move now to uh, the uh, to the next timeline, which is the. Can anyone read what is our next in timeline or timeline? Yes, Ms. Barrientos. Egyptian art pre-dynastic period. Okay, very good. So our next in our timeline is the Egyptian art in 5000 uh, 5, uh, BC to 300 AD, or AD means the year of the Lord. And it uh, the Egyptian art called the pre-dynastic period. All right. So the characteristic in Egyptians art, and one read uh, can read this one. Ako na lang po. Yes, Miss Grace. The Egyptians were interested mainly in the architecture and sculpture. Many of their paintings, particularly those that decorated their tubs, they gave drawing precedence over color. My Egyptian made painting therefore was done for the sake of the dead artworks that they scope Ivory Metop Metropolitan Museum of Art. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, Miss Grace. So in Egyptian art, their characteristic, uh, they were interested mainly in uh, architecture and sculpture. And many of their paintings, particularly those that decorated their tombs, they gave drawing uh, precedence over color. So it means uh, they give a more important uh, in their drawings in the tombs. And uh, much Egyptian painting, therefore, uh, which was done for the sake of the dead. All right. So their artworks and painting, uh, painting, sculpture are both highly stylized and symbolic. Their tombs were even more important to them than their palaces. And all Egyptians art is uh, based on perfect balance uh, because it reflects the ideal world of the gods. And uh, Egyptians art was always first and foremost functional, no matter how it, uh, how beautiful it is, or how beautifully a statue may have uh, been crafted, its purpose was to serve as a home for their spirit or for a spirit or their God. So in Egyptians art, uh, we see how, uh, we will see how creative they are, all right? So this is one of their uh, famous artwork, which is a uh, Davis comb. It is made on uh, of ivory, and we will see that in the Museum of Art, Metropolitan, all right? The, uh, that is a comb, okay? Look how how creative they, uh, they, uh, they are. They, they create uh, their carving on that uh, comb on that Davis uh, comb. That's how what are they have in that uh, age. So in their uh, architecture, ancient Egyptian architecture used sand dried and keen uh, baked bricks, fine sandstones, limestones, and granite. So the stone had to fit precisely uh, together. Uh, ramps were uh, used to uh, allow workmen to move up as the height of the construction. And uh, their sculpture, the ancient art of uh, Egyptian sculpture evolved more uh, to represent the Asian, uh, the Asian Egyptian gods, pharaohs, uh, uh, Paris and uh, their kings and queens in physical form. Okay, so this is one of the example or of their paintings. So Egyptian paintings, all Egyptian uh, reliefs were painted and less prestigious works in tombs, temples, palaces, 
uh, palaces were just painted on a flat surface. And our uh, architecture, this is the first uh, style of pyramid they uh, made. It is designed by the artist and the architect Imhotep, and it is an underground burial. Okay. All right. So here is the mummy cases. This is this is the cases where their uh, loved ones or ancestor they put the uh, they put it in this uh, kind of cases. So as you can see in the picture, it is carefully curved, uh, carefully curved, colorfully decorated, uh, hygro, hieroglyphic, uh, hieroglyphics, pictures of gods, and it is very uh, detailed and it has lots of a colors. And even inside were decorated, often made in layers. So that is uh, one of the famous or their famous artwork. So as uh, I've told you, Egyptian art, we, uh, we see how creative they are. And by their artwork, it shows how, they, uh, how highly they respect their ancestors or their leader. That even in the afterlife, they still carefully taking care of it. And uh, Egyptian art, we see how, um, all right. And by the way, do you have, uh, before we proceed to other, uh, to the next uh, art timeline, do you have any question about the Egyptians art or suggestion or did you understand? Did you understand a uh, class about the Egyptians art or what arts they have? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, very good. So you don't have any question about it? Okay. So let's move now to our next uh, time uh, art timeline which is the Greek art in 1700 to 1400. All right. So anyone read uh, the characteristic in Greek art? Okay, Ms. Garcia. Their art is called classical art. They were interested chiefly in portraying gods. Therefore, they, pro their, they portray ideal beauty rather than any particular person. They master the representation of human figure lines and their sinuosity to perfection, both in drawing and sculpture. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, Ms. Gar uh, Garcia. And uh, the third one, uh, the fourth one, is they create art pieces for the joy of the spirit, for the pleasurable feeling of seeing beautiful things. And uh, their artworks, uh, the, uh, one of their famous artwork is the Pergamon Altar and the Riace Bronzes. So let's see what it is. So this is the per uh, Pergamon Altar. All right. So uh, can anyone read, uh, read what is the Pergamon altar is? Anyone? Mom. Yes. Okay. Ms. Barrientos, go ahead. Battle between the giants and the Olympian gods called the G Gigantomachy. Mm -hmm. Please, it, show, it shows um, what ano pong ba? Gaia, Gaia. Pleading, Gaia pleading with Athena to spare her son. 
Okay, thank you very much for that, ma'am, uh, Ms. Barrienta. So, the Pergamon Altar, it is all about the bottle. Uh, they made this be, uh, to show how the battle between the giants and the Olympian gods. And that is called the uh, Gigantomachy or Gigantomachy phrase. And it shows that Gaia is pleading with Athena to spare her son. All right, and this one is the Riace bronzes. So anyone, uh, I saw Miss Diaz is raising her hand a while ago. <laughs> okay, so please read. The Riace bronzes refer to as warrior A and warrior B. The pair exemplify and the and the classical style of representing lifelike, no, spatially dynamic figures. The statues were discovered by Stefano Mariotini in the Medi Mediterranean Sea, just off the coast of Raya's Marina, Italy, on August 16, 1972. Warrior A is more robust and heavier in proportions. His chest is more upright and defined. He is also the younger of the two warriors. Last, Warrior B has a stronger curvature than Warrior A. His stance has a little more sway to it. With a continuous swooping line from his shoulder to his hip, down to his knees, and all the way to his feet, he is less upright than Warrior A because of this posture. Okay, thank you very much for that, Miss Diaz. So here, the picture shows it uh, the Warrior A and the Warrior B. So the Warrior A here is in the left one. The left side, which is the dark one. And the warrior B is in the, uh, I'm sorry, the warrior A is in the right uh, right side. And the warrior B is in the left one. So it shows here that warrior A is more robust and heavier in proportion. His chest is more upright and defined. He is also the younger of the two warriors. So this this is the warrior A. As you can see, he is more younger than the warrior B. And the warrior B has a stronger curvature. Look at that. Look at, don't look this, okay? So look at uh, his uh, body. It is more cur uh, curvature than warrior A. And his stance has a little more sway uh, to it. With a continuous swooping line. What is a swooping line? It is a uh, like downwards or yung pababa, like this. Oh. Yeah, like that. So it is a more uh, swooping line from his shoulder to his hip. To his hip down to his knees. All right? So that is, uh, and the warrior A, and he is less upright than the warrior A. This is the warrior B and this is the warrior A. All right. So that is one of their uh, famous artwork, which is the Riace bronzes, one of the famous artwork of Greek art. All right. So do you have any question about our Greek art? Do you understand? Yes, so far. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Stephanie. All right. So let's move to our next uh, art history timeline, which is the Roman art in 1700 to 1400. Okay. All right. So that is their characteristic. Anyone, please read the characteristic of Roman art. Yes, Miss Stephanie, go ahead. Known for their architecture and engineering rather than art such as painting, poet, pottery, pottery, and sculpture, Romans inspired by the Greek gods and Greek art, etc. Strong desire for a realism, practical and utilitarian. Mm. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, uh, Miss uh, Stephanie. So the characteristic in Roman art, they are known of their uh, architecture and engineering. 
they are more in engineering and architect uh, architecture uh, rather than paintings or doing pottery and sculpture. And uh, most of their work is inspired by the gods or the Greek gods. And uh, the they are strong. Uh, their desire is very strong for realism, and it is practical and utilitarian, or which is useful. All right. So colossal to shows uh, colossal to shows Roman power. All right. So their artworks. Their one of uh, their famous art, artwork is a. Uh, Picasso, a uh, fresco of a young man from Villa de Ariano or Ariana and the Ark of Constantine. So let's see. This is the, and one can we, uh, read the description of this picture? Other students? Yes, Miss Michaela. Roman fresco wall, painting of a young man, resting from the Triclinium Villa Aranya, Stabi, near Pompeii, invention 1993, Naples National Museum. Okay, thank you very much. So that is the Roman fresco wall, painting of a young man, resting from Triclinium. Villa, uh, Villa in Ariana, Stabiae, near Pompeii. So that is for uh, that is in Naples Na uh, National Museum now. Okay, and the next artwork that uh, very famous is the the Triumphal Arc of Constantine in Rome. It is not only a superb uh, example of the ideological and stylistic changes Constantine's reign brought to the uh, to art but also demonstrate the emperor's carefully adherence to traditional forms of roman imperial art and architecture all right so let's see the comparison of the greek sculpture to roman sculpture as we can see in this picture, Greek uh, sculpture was created to represent the idealized human forms of athletes and gods. As you can see, his body is very uh, balanced, proportion, rather than, uh, than Roman uh, uh, sculpture. And the ancient Roman sculpture represent the real or the ordinary people with their uh, natural beauty and imperfection as as i told you a while ago there uh they are more on realism so they shows in their sculpture uh the natural beauty and imp uh, with the imperfection and in roman art it is more uh they are more in our uh, architecture and they are more interested in making buildings to show how powerful uh, Romans are. So lots of their uh, artworks are more in uh, they made buildings just to show how powerful they are. Okay, so in our next uh, art timeline, so before we uh, proceed to that, do you have any question about the Roman arts? Did you see the difference uh, between the uh, sculpture of Roman arts and uh, the Greek art? Do you have any question? Or did you understand about the Roman and the Greek, the differences of them? Hello? <laughs> we understand, Paul. Okay. I think you don't have any question, and I think you understand all. So let's move to our uh, next in timeline, which is the Asian art. And that is from 653 BC to 1900 AD. So uh, in Asian art, we have three, which is, but first, uh, let's, uh, 
Let's proceed to their characteristic in Asian art. All right. So please, anyone read the characteristic in Asian art? Anyone in the in uh, the class? Hello? Can anyone read the characteristic? Yes. Ako na lang po, ma'am. Oh, okay. Miss, um, uh, go ahead. Chinese, Japanese, Indian. All this and continuous kind of art, traditional, painting, sculpture, pottery, decorative arts, ceramic factories shown wealth and power of emperors still have today. Serene mm -hmm. meditative art nature, ink mm -hmm. on silk or paper. Okay, very good. Thank you very much for that, Miss uh, Paluga. What is your first name, ma'am? Oh, like Aubrey. Aubrey. Okay, thank you very much, Miss Aubrey. So, again, the characteristic in Asian art, uh, it has three, which is the Chinese, Japanese, and Indian. So their uh, artworks, it is the oldest and continuous kind of art. So until now, we see their artworks. They still making it. They have paintings, sculpture, pottery, decorative uh, arts, and they still have the fa uh, ceramic factories, show the wealth and power of emperors, and uh, still now, uh, still have today. And uh, their Artwork is a serene, which is uh, means peaceful, meditative art. They do meditative art and more on nature, which is uh, they consider uh, their thoughts before uh, doing an artwork. And uh, they use ink, most of their artwork, they use ink on silk or paper. All right. So this, this is the artwork which is the terracotta soldiers in China, Hansen Temple in China as well, Rangoli painting from India, Taj Mahal in India, and the Great Wave of Kanagawa, which is from Japan, and the tea leaf jar from Japan as well. All right, so let's see their artworks. So first, in China. All right, so in China, they were interested in uh, swirling lines. They were uh, interested in nature, animals, tree, uh, trees, flowers, and rocks, and waters. And Chinese artists wanted to express the relationship between the nature. So as you can see here in their artworks, you can see the uh, trees, uh, water, people. So that's how Chinese want to express they want to express and they want to see in their uh, artworks what the, uh, the relationship between the nature and the people all right so one of their uh, famous artwork in china is the terracotta warriors which is uh, terracotta soldiers it is stand inside the mausoleum of the first king emperor and consists of more than 7,000 life-size tomb the uh, terracotta figures of warriors and horses buried with the first emperor king and uh, uh, it means uh, they, they are the guard to his burial site and they protect uh, they are protecting the entry uh, to the uh, after life. That's why they made these terracotta soldiers. All right, and their second um, artwork, famous artwork, is the Hansen Temple, which is called the Cold Mountain Temple. It is a Buddhist temple. Uh, it is a Buddhist temple and a monastery in Suzhou, China. And the temple was originally constructed during the Liang Dynasty in 502 to 557. It, represent, it presents the uh, uh, architectural style of Qing Dynasty in 1644 to 
to 1911. All right, so that is the uh, that is the famous artwork of China, which is the uh, Terracotta Soldiers and the Hansan Temple. So let's proceed now to the next uh, Asian art, which is the India. So in India. They, uh, most of their artworks are bro uh, from bron uh, bronze and stones were most commonly used in Indian sculpture. And they became more explicit, uh, representing an episode of the Buddha's life and uh, teaching. So most of uh, we can see in their works, more of them is about Buddha. Okay, so this one, this is made from bronze, and this one is made from stone. Okay, all right, so this is the first, uh, one of the famous artwork uh, in India. So please read the first artwork in India. And the one from the class. Yes, Miss Grace. This is a form of the sun painting decoration that uses finely ground white powder and colors. Okay, thank you very much for that. So there, uh, this is a Rangoli painting, which means it is made from a finely ground white powder. Or as uh, this is a sand painting, and mostly it is made uh, outside their houses. Yeah. That is uh, the uh, that is called Rangoli painting, one of their famous artwork in India. And the second one is their second. Uh, they're one of the famous or most of the famous artwork that they have is the Taj Mahal. And I know you know this as well. This is very famous. So anyone read uh, about Taj Mahal? Ako na lang po, ma'am. Oh, uh, yes, Miss Princess. Taj Mahal, known as one of the seven wonders of the world, as one of India's greatest pieces of architecture and art. It was built by Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in memory of his third wife, Mumtaz Mahal, the jewel of Muslim art in India and one of the universally admired masterpieces pieces of the world's heritage okay thank you very much miss princess so Taj Mahal is one of the most or known as one of the seven wonders of the world so it is uh, it uh, the the name of Taj Mahal came from the third wife of um uh, Mughal emperor uh, uh, Shah Jahan, and that is from the name of her third wife, which is the Mumtaz Mahal. That's why it's called Taj Mahal. And uh, the Taj Mahal is the one, uh, the jewel of the Muslim art in India, and one of the universal admired uh, uh, masterpieces of the world his uh, heritage. So that is uh, the first one. One of the artworks is the Rangole. Uh, Rongoli, and the second one is the Taj Mahal, and that is from India. So, do you have any question about the artworks or about the India? Do you have any question, or did you understand? Hello, you can speak, or you can uh, put in chat back. So, do you have any question about the? The artwork of India. Class? Wala naman po, ma'am. Yes. Ms. Chris, uh, Mr. Christian, do you have question? Wala po, ma'am. Ano po? I mean po, naintindihan naman po na maayos. Okay. Thank you very much. So, the, all right. So, okay. So, let's move now to the last one in Asian art, which is, okay, can anyone read this one from Japan? Ako na lang po. Yes, Mo, uh, Ms. Moana, go ahead. Japanese art 
used a wide range of art styles and media, including ancient pottery, sculpture in wood and bronze, ink painting on silk and paper. Okay, thank you very much. So in Japanese, they used a wide range of art style, uh, including the media, uh, ancient pottery, sculpture in wood, and the bronze ink painting on silk and paper. Okay, so let's see their artwork. This is one of the famous artwork that they have before in, in Japan, uh, in that year in Japan, which is the Great Wave of Kanagawa. Okay, so can anyone read the about the Great Wave of Kanagawa? Mr. Christian, can you read this? Uh, may you read this one? Oh, sige po. Okay. The Great Wave of Kanagawa, Katsushika Hokusai, 1762-1849, a woodblock print created a through the process of printmaking that was created with the use of ink and carving tools contains three elements the sea weave up by a star three boats and the mountains okay thank you very much for that mr christian so the great uh, wave of kanagawa it is made uh, uh, uh made by Ka katsusika hokosai in 70 uh, 1760 uh, in 1760 and 1849, it is a wood black print created the, the through the process of printmaking. And as you can see here, you will see uh, three elements, which is the mountain, the three boats, this one, this one, and this one, and the waves or the storm. It is representing the storm. All right, so that is the Great Wave of Kanagawa, one of the famous artwork in Japan. And their second artwork, one of the uh, famous artwork that they have as well, is the... Anyone read this one? Ako na lang po, ma'am. Yes, Ms. Micaela, go ahead. Japanese ceramics are still among the finest in the world and include the earliest known artifacts of their culture. Okay, thank you very much for that. So this is uh, a ceramic uh, in Japan. Uh, Japanese ceramics are still among the finest. So that is uh, until now, they are making a ceramic uh, pottery. And uh, this is the earliest known artifacts of their culture in Japan. So this is the ceramic pot. As you can see here, they uh, they make it very creative. They may uh, made it very attractive. It has more colors, or uh, and uh, more um, detailed. The leaves, the flowers. So that's how creative the Japanese culture or the Japanese artwork. All right, so. Okay, so uh, the artwork of Indian and Chinese and Japanese are all heavily influenced by the culture and the way of life of the people. As, as we saw in their artworks, uh, we see uh, the, their culture in their art or in their artworks. And Indian, Chinese, Japanese have the characteristic of showing the culture and, his, and the history of the country where it is from. So it is very easy uh, to uh, identify what uh, what artwork or that artwork came from because in Chinese, Japanese, and Ch uh, India, they show the in their artwork the uh, where it, uh, the history and the culture. Okay. All right, so this is uh, this is called the tea leaf, uh, tea leaf jar with a design of wisteria by Nonomura Ninsei from Edo period or Edo uh, period, and this is now in. You can see, uh, we will we can see this in National Treasure. All right. Okay, and this one is one. Uh, 
also one of their famous artwork in Japan, which is the Sokongohin. I don't know how to pronounce it right, but yeah, that is Sokongohin. It is a, a, play, a painted clay, so see how creative they have, how... Uh, how uh, it is very de uh, very detailed um, painted clay and uh, this uh, art is in the temple Nara from Japan and the height of this one is 1.739 meters all right all right so that is uh, that is all about uh, the art his or not that is not all about we still have more history aside from what we have discussed today but since we have a limit of time we will discuss that to other uh, to our uh, next meeting which is uh, we will discuss the other art history okay so do you have any question on what we have tackled today from start until uh until we finished uh the in japanese do you have any question or or suggestion or did you understand class do you understand or did you have any do you have any question about what we have tackled What's that? Hello? Class, are you still there? <laughs> Hello, you have yes, so, um, okay. So, all right. So, thank you very much. Okay. So, thank you very much. So, I am happy that you all, that all, that all of you understand what we have discussed about our history timeline. So now, since you don't have any question or violent reaction or suggestion like that, <laughs> let's test your knowledge. So are you ready? Yes, Paul. Okay, Ms. Mendoza. All right. So let's test your knowledge. Okay. First question. Do you think the history of the arts has a big impact? on our arts today and why anyone you can answer in the uh, chat box uh, chat box and you can raise your hand as well so do you think the uh, the history of the arts has a big impact on our arts today anyone Ms. Mendoza? Yes, Ms. Aubrey? Yes po, ma'am. Kasi po, um, dahil po sa mga arts po dati, dun po tayo nagkakaroon ng ideas and nag na nagkakaroon po tayo ng inspiration po based po sa mga nagawang arts before. Wow, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. You, uh, your answer is correct. So, okay, I will read the, the answer of others uh, from Evangelista Kians or Kians Luis. Yes, because history of art cultivates us, cultivate our culture that molds who we are today. And from Mark. Yes, because it can influence the new generation of artists in making their arts today. Okay, very good. So all your answer is correct. So for me, uh, yes, as well. Because from the first artwork of our ancestors or from the first people on earth, we get their ideas and develop a new style. And until now, we still manage to make more style and more ideas from their artworks, from the old artworks. And uh, as uh, we all say, we cannot do or uh, produce new things without knowing 
or studying the old history or the history of the art. Am I correct? Okay. All right. Thank you very much for your answer, uh, class. So all your answer is correct. Okay. So now let's proceed or let's generalize what we have tackled. Okay. So can anyone tell what are those are timelines we've just discussed or we've just tackled today? Anyone? Okay. I want to tell what are those arts timelines we have tackled today? Hello? Anyone can speak in the mic and uh, tell those artworks or art timelines, I mean the timelines that we have just tackled. Or I will be the one who will call if no one will uh, raise their hand or. Um. Yes, Ms. Aubrey? Oh, Ms. Barrientas, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, we have talked about the Roman art, Greek art, Egyptian art. I'm sorry, uh, I cannot hear you. I think your mic is very, yeah, the volume is not, we can't hear you or, okay, uh, you can answer in chat box, the others, uh, what are those arts timelines we have just tackled today? Roman art, mm -hmm. good, stone age, Greek art. Very good. Asian art, Old Stone Age, Middle Stone Age, Egyptian. Very good. So all your answer is correct. So we have tackled the art timelines. Are uh, it is the Paleolithic art, Mesolithic art, Neolithic, uh, the Egyptians art, Greek art, Roman, and the Asian art. Very good. Thank you very much, class. Even though you are not uh, talking in mic, it's uh, all your answer in chat box is correct. Okay. All right. So now, uh, since you, uh, you understand all what we have tackled, let's proceed now to our quiz. Okay. So hold on. Okay. I will put this uh, link in our... Um, chat box. So, here we go. We can answer now our quiz. Okay. Answer now our quiz and uh, the link is on the uh, chat box. Copy it and open it so we can proceed now to our um, assignment, okay? This is your assignment. Create the PowerPoint presentation and put there the other artworks, at least three, made by the ones or the seven timelines we discussed today. All right, and study the next art history timeline, which are the Christian and uh, medieval art, the Byzantine, Islamic, Middle Age and Gothic art, and the Renaissance. All right, so did you understand, guys? Uh, do you copy your assignment? Did you copy the assignment? This is your assignment, okay? And please do answer your quiz. I just put the link. Okay, I just put, uh, put the link in the comment box. So copy it and answer it, all right? 
So that's all. Of, uh, that's all for today, everyone. Thank you very much. This is again your uh, student teacher, We Shall Center Rosa. So don't forget to answer your quizzes. All the uh, the attendance for today, you have plus five, and all who uh, participate uh, participate. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry, plus ten, pala. Thank you very much, and have a blessed day, everyone. Thank don't you. Don't forget to answer your. Please Thank and ask you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank, ma Thank you, everyone. You may now leave the room. Uh, we have Mom um, Michelle's postcon. Thank you. Thank you, BSBA. Thank you, BSBA. Thank you, class. Thank you, po. Teacher Michelle, pwede pa stop sharing na po. Yes, ma'am, wait lang. Paano po stop? I'm hold on. Where is that? Hindi mo makikita yun, ma'am.